Hi everybody, welcome to another edition of the Sunday Drive. The Sunday Drive is sponsored by Midtown Mattress and Home Furnishings in beautiful downtown Lindsay. They have home furnishings, home decor, and of course mattresses. So the next time you need something for your home, please see our friends at Midtown Mattress in Lindsay. Okay, today I am so excited to have Olympic silver medalist Olivia Apps coming on a Sunday Drive with me. Olivia, as I said, she just got back from Paris. She won a silver medal in Rugby Sevens and she spent a lot of her childhood in Lindsay. So we're going to talk to her about all of that and more on this edition of the Sunday Drive. Okay, we are back with Olympic silver medalist Olivia Apps. Congratulations. I am Thank so you. excited to meet you and you have your medal around your neck. Let's I have do. a look at it. It's really heavy. You let me yeah. um, hold it earlier. It's very, very heavy. Very heavy, yeah. I think it's a piece of the Eiffel Tower that's here too, oh. which I think adds a bit of weight. So That is really yeah, interesting. A unique piece and then it has the design on the back that has um, mm. Athens and the Eiffel Tower and then a little engraving that says Rugby Sevens turned down on the bottom. Mm. Wow, I yeah. love it. Yeah. How did it feel to have that put around your neck? It was pretty, I mean, it was pretty surreal overall. I think it was, it was one of those moments that once we won our semi-final and we knew that we were going to be Olympic medalists, we just didn't know which color medal we would take home. Um, to actually be on the podium and be able to, you know, have that medal around your neck in front of so many friends and family was really special and definitely I'll remember that for a long, long time. Definitely. And I think the, the entire country was watching yeah. and everybody was so proud of you. It was a really exciting moment. Um, how did you get to this point? What, when did you first develop an interest in rugby sevens? And actually, I wanted to ask you, what is rugby sevens for people who don't, who aren't familiar with the sport? Yeah, rugby sevens is a version of rugby union, which is the traditional rugby that you would see, which is 15 people aside, that what most high schools play. And that's what I started playing rugby growing up. And then sevens was kind of an innovation of rugby where you basically have seven people versus seven, but it's the same size field. So the idea is that there's a lot more running, a lot, um, much fewer tackles and overall just more speed and higher pace of the game. But the games are only 14 minutes long. Okay. Um, so it's just a lot of sprinting and it's just very fast paced. Right. Um, and I started playing, yeah, in grade 10 in high school at IE Weldon in Lindsay and just kind of fell in love with the sport. And there's a pathway for a lot of athletes through Rugby Ontario and then through your provincial program, you can get selected for national team camps and other kind of competitions. And I just got scouted from there and joined the national team, the senior national team after high school in 2016. And what is it that you love about the sport? It's definitely, I mean, it's very, it's very fun. I do like playing a contact sport. It's a physical game and I think it has a lot of different skill sets involved, um, which I really do. I love like the tactical side of the game. There's also the, the community aspect of the game, which I think is really cool. Um, when I first started playing rugby in grade 10, I found it was a really inclusive sport and was just really welcoming of a lot of different, uh, you know, body types, a lot of different kinds of personalities, uh, people that you know, they're big, they're small, whatever. There was just a place for them on the field. And in high school, I think that was really important uh, for me to feel uh, welcome. And then also for to see so many other incredible people join the team as well. It really had that kind of fun uh, community that I really loved. And then just the, the competitiveness of the sport and you get to travel the world and meet so many amazing people um, that it's definitely been just just an, like a, a sport that keeps on giving, I guess. Tell me about that. Where have you traveled with the sport and who have you met? Well, I've traveled a lot of places for sure. Um, we get to travel in our tournament, in our regular season, we travel eight times throughout the year. So we'll start in Dubai and Cape Town, and then we go to Perth or Sydney in Australia. We have our home tournament in Vancouver. We go to Hong Kong, Singapore, um, and Madrid, and sometimes we go to France as well. So those are like our basic, basic uh, stops that we get to go to, but I've been fortunate to go to New Zealand, been fortunate to go to Japan, um, different locations in Europe and overall just kind of wherever rugby gets to be played, we usually get to travel there at one stage. And you're the team captain. How did mm -hmm. that come about and what does that mean to you? Um, yeah, I became the captain of the team in 2021 um, after the Tokyo Olympics. So so this is your second Olympics, right? This is my second Olympics, yeah. And after Tokyo, we had a, a large turnover in the team. A lot of, uh, of our teammates retired after Tokyo. And so it was kind of a rebuilding stage and I was one of the senior players that stayed and I got, I was promoted to captain, which was a huge honor and privilege. And 
was able to, you know, stay on that position for three years and build you the team to Paris. And it's been, yeah, it's been one of the highlights of my career so far as being able to be leading the team. And it's a real honor for me. So how does a little girl who spent a lot of her childhood in Lindsay end up at the Olympics? Tell me a little bit more about your, you know, your formative years and what might have kind of helped you get to that point. I mean, so many things. I think that it's easy to watch the Olympics and, and really, you know, appreciate the athletic performance of any athlete that's there. And, and you're really able to appreciate their journey, but you're not able to really see all of the people and the things that go into that person or that performance. Right. And there's been so many things that I credit to um, my success, my team success, and definitely my family and my friends, um, all the coaches that I've had. And I think that it's been really important to have a support system that's really strong to be able to get me through the really hard times and also just continue to encourage me um, when we have success, you know, keep going and, and keep, you know, pushing for more. And I think that that's just something that I've had all along is the support from my family and friends and coaches that that belief um, and I think as a young girl I just was encouraged to keep playing and to keep being myself which I think allowed me to get to this place. And you've talked before a little bit about adversity right and your alopecia mm -hmm. and how that kind of impacted you as well. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah I think that um, yeah I lost my hair when I was seven and it was definitely you know a lot of challenges just within that um, but I think rugby was really a cool outlet for me to find a lot of courage and strength and confidence on the field of play which really translated into other areas of my life and I think that's a really great thing about sport and the great thing about rugby that. is that it just allows you to really express yourself and a safe sport like the team that I that I had playing growing up was really safe and inclusive and and I think that really is a credit to the person I am now um, and I think the adversity that I face, I quickly realized that if I could find confidence in things that I do, like how I look or, you know, having hair or not really doesn't matter because I have a lot of other things that I can offer this world and things that also give me confidence as well. So I rugby in a lot of ways, I think was my saving grace and having my family and friends' support really helped as well. And what would you say to little kids watching who might have a dream like yours and have an, uh, some adversity to overcome? Would you have any advice to give them? Yeah, I definitely would have advice. I think that the, I mean, the, the most important one for me that I actually learned at the Olympics for like the bajillion time probably is just to never give up. And, and I know that sounds really cheesy, but um, never give up on yourself because no one else is giving up on you. And that like the belief that anything you can really achieve anything that you wish to, if you believe in yourself is so powerful and going into the Olympic Games, I, I had so much belief in my team and we were definitely seen as the underdogs. I mean, mm -hmm. we were placed ninth last year, this time last year on the World Series and going into this tournament, no one expected us to finish with a medal. And that's one of those things that like sometimes other people, your family and friends, they believe in you and they want you to do your best. And if you believe in yourself, you can really achieve anything. Tell me a little bit more about your training. How often do you train? Um, what kinds of things do you do? Yeah, lots of a different, lot. A lot of different things. Um, I train in Victoria, so our whole team is centralized on Vancouver Island. Um, nice and we, spot. Yeah, it's a really nice spot. And we train there basically Monday through Friday with the occasional Saturday practice. Um, and we we'll do anything from we have lots of meetings, video review, we have a weight sessions, we'll have speed mechanics training, so sprinting and change of direction and agility. We'll do conditioning, so whether that's just like running aerobic fitness or conditioning with rugby involved. Um, and then we'll also just have practice and skill sessions where we'll work on field. So we're, it's probably around four to six hours of training per day, um, with some days being lighter than others, and then we get our weekends off. So it's pretty much a full-time job? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a full-time job, and we're fortunate to have the opportunity to have some... We work in the evenings, or some players are in school part-time. Um, you kind of need to have another job going on on the side to support yourself fully, but um, some girls also are in school and then can have support from family and friends to continue to play. Right, and that's something else that people have been talking about recently, right, is the um, Canadian Olympians and how... Uh, the funding 
and I don't know if you if you want to talk about this or not, but the funding issue um, around the fact that a lot of Canadian Olympians have to work jobs and it kind of takes away from the training. Yeah, you know, no, it's a, it's a huge reality for many, many Olympians. And, you know, you have organizations like Can Fund, which is a non-for-profit organization that literally gets private donations to fund Olympians or people to the Olympic Dreams because they can't afford it on their own. And... That's an amazing organization that helps Canadian athletes, and that's just the reality for a lot of players. You know, unless you have your private in, your private sponsorships or your, um, your if you're not getting support from family and friends, you're probably working. And if we're living in a place like Victoria, that's really expensive to live. Um, that is the reality: is that uh, sport in Canada isn't funded to the level that I, I believe that we should be, and I believe how what we deserve to be because we train really hard and we sacrifice a lot. And the Olympics is seen as this amazing accomplishment and it for sure is but the the funding behind it is definitely not there in Canada what can people do to help with that um I would say can fund is a like c-a-n fund f-u-n-d is a huge opportunity to help Canadian athletes directly because you can fund them and support them in their dreams I mean they're accepting donations now for the winter olympics and that's you know any winter any winter sport is expensive and those yeah. athletes pay a lot of money to get themselves to the olympics and having any extra support is huge can fund it as an amazing organization you can reach out to your local club to see how you can support grassroots rugby as well i think is big um playing at the provincial level is also expensive and so players to continue to developing to get to those pathways having support in their provinces is big as well okay so let's talk about the future any plans five years down the road? What do you think you're going to be doing? And um, how do you plan for rugby to be kind of part of your life on an ongoing basis? Yeah, I mean, in the immediate future, I'm heading back to Victoria um, next week because I am playing in the 15th tournament there in Vancouver. Um, there's a WXV, which is basically the like world championship where the top six teams play against each other. Oh, wow. Um, so I'll be playing in that next month. And then hoping to continue playing sevens and... Um, playing 15s, I'm hoping to be part of the World Cup next summer with the 15s team. Um, and then we'll see. Like, I'll, I'll love to keep playing, and 2028 is definitely on my um, to do list. Good for you. But I'm going to take it year by year for sure. But rugby is definitely going to be going to be my life for a long time. It just depends on um, at what level, I guess. In what capacity? Yeah, in what capacity, yeah.